All right, everybody, when uh, we're, we're moving along further in this course, once the theory starts settling in, um, we start attacking a little bit more of what to do with it. I mean, we're, we're doing that throughout the whole course, right? But then this gets really, um, I'm gonna say exciting. It depends if you think it's exciting. Um, when, when we're really establishing like how to play it and make the sounds that we want. And that's a whole part of the course is taking the guesswork out of what you're playing. You know what something is going to sound like while it's happening, sort of like a conversation, right? A conversation is not pre-planned, it just sort of happens, and you know what you're saying and what you're about to say, okay? So the one thing that I love about the blues, it's gonna be the first example, we're doing A blues, is now technically, because it's an A7, the four chord's a D7, back to an A7, and then the five chord is an E7, you know, technically that's in three different keys, right? We're used to playing a minor pentatonic over it, over all three of those chord changes, which is funny because the first chord's not even a minor, it's the dominant, right? Technically the, the, the seven, um, which is really interesting, uh, the way that we can use the blues <clears throat> to explain how to play by the rules and not by the rules, okay? So one thing that I love, I'm gonna put this blues backing track, and what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna accentuate each chord, okay? So if I do that, I'm gonna use my pentatonic as the base of what it is that I'm playing. For that one chord, that, the third of the chord, even if you just play that A bar chord, where your middle finger ends up, that's the third, the major third, right? I like sliding into it, you know, kind of giving that, that uh, minor to major sort of sound, so I'm going to accentuate that note a little bit. Um, when I go to the four chord, right, the four is in the, the pentatonic scale. The root note, which is in that four chord, is in the pentatonic scale, as well as the flat seven in that four chord. But the third, which would be the natural six in, in the key of A, is not. So I accentuate that six, right, that natural six, when I get to the four chord. Now, when I get to the five chord, something really abrupt happens, is I can hit that natural seven. So if I play this pentatonic scale, just up and down. That really, really sticks out. It's like, do I want to be that abrupt with it? I may not even want to hit the major third over the one chord right or that six which is the third of the four chord over the four chord that might even be too abrupt i might just want to sort of flow through while these changes happen below that's the other option right so then when i get to this five chord do i want to make that big of a jump right what i like to do as well is instead of hitting that natural seven which is in that five chord i like to hit the two Right, right. the two and A kind of accentuates that five chord without being super abrupt, right? It's a little bit less. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go through that. All right, so I'm playing over, I'm purposefully playing over the changes. And I realize now that I'm looking at the camera that I look like hell. I've got a gig tonight. I just went for a run. Give me a break. <laughs> um, here we go. So this is the blues in A, right? Accentuate the changes. I'm not just ripping over. playing over those changes. Right that for the four chord. When I when I get down to just that that bluesy 
right? That also starts to stick out a little bit. Um, and it gives that 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 sort of like uh, almost like a major-ish mixolydian sound, and then that just like a straight bluesy. Right, can sort of pull it out. So that's why I love the blues, because it's very constructed, and we can see where those changes lie. Now, another song that we, that we were working on, which I also really love, is if we take something non-diatonic, technically the blues is non-diatonic. Um, so I have this, the backing track for Jammin' by Bob Marley. So it's B minor to an E major or an E dominant seven. So, so right there, that gives me a B Dorian. Right, just because that that the four chord, that E, is major. It immediately goes to a G, to an F sharp minor. What makes that really interesting is there's clashing notes from one chord to the next. I have this E major, or at least the major third of, 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 of the seven, E seven, going down a half step to the root note of the G. This gives me a lot of options. Um, what we can look at here is uh, a common tone, a pivot tone, which would be that B. That B is in the E7, and it's also in the G, right? That is also the root, the home base of that chord progression. So I can stick to that B and sort of let those chords move around it. And that's going to give me a little bit more ease with the melody that I want to create. Or I can be very specific and really hammer it out. That for the E, and then I could directly go from that G sharp to the G for that G chord, right? It depends what sound I really want to go for. Um, so let's explore a little bit, okay? The first two rounds, uh, I'm not going to really hammer out those changes. I'm not going to accentuate the notes that are wildly different. All right, and I'm gonna sort of stay. Now, this is also, it changes from Dorian, right? The first two chords, B minor to E7 would be Dorian. When it goes to G to F sharp minor, that's gonna change to natural minor, Aeolian, okay? So I don't need to hit, which would be the natural six to the flat six um, during the second half of that progression if I don't want to make an abrupt change, and because they're both minor, we can always lean on the minor pentatonic, right? So let's just see what happens. I'm going to play um, a little bit more, um, a little bit more over the top. Let the changes accentuate the changes, the rhythm, right? And sort of sit over top and just let you hear how that sounds. <laughs> sharp over that F sharp minor, right, to accentuate that chord. Um, I am the root note, and I've got that four, I've got that E when I change to that E7. So those are those are nice tones that aren't going to make a, a huge abrupt change. Now, that, that would be like sort of like, I don't know why the word diplomatic is coming to mind, but sort of like a diplomatic way of playing over those changes, you know what I mean? Trying to make it smooth, let the, let the rhythm uh, play those changes and, and meet. Now, if I really wanted to give into it, last line when I'm on that E, right? And then immediately going and playing up uh, a sort of like G, a sort of like a G6, you know, arpeggio. That really gives me this major third or natural six major third for the E, but right, that's really, really gonna focus in on those changes. Do I wanna be that abrupt? The one next to the two. Maybe one is gonna to sound too much, and then when it does, I can switch to the other one and say, ooh, you know what I'm gonna do? 
I'm gonna hit the B. Just sort of hammer on that B for both. And then obviously getting down to that A for, for the F sharp, right? That would be not such an abrupt uh, way of playing the changes. So this is how we're sort of building melody. We know it's coming. What we're trying to do um, is build off of what we just did, just like a conversation. We're trying to build off of what it was that we just said and trying to make sense within the conversation. If I were, and this isn't going to be bad, but if I were to do something like this, right, not a lot of direction, right? And that's, that's even taking the rhythm, uh, the rhythmic phrasing out of the whole thing, but I'm not, uh, I'm in the right key. I'm staying within the pentatonic so I don't have to worry about whether it's the natural six or the flat six, you know, um, and playing very safely, but I'm not really building melody, right? And that is significantly different than... something for, for the ear to grab onto. Um, so just so, something to think about if, if, if that theory wasn't too far over your head, um, um, just because um, guitar players, we, we can get away, I'm not saying that in the demeaning way, it's just that we can get away with a lot without knowing theory. So some of your players might be able to play circles around me and not know uh, theoretically why, but <clears throat> so I wanted to just, just sort of point that out. Um, you know, and, and something to think about, and this is sort of what we're getting towards the end um, once all the theory starts making sense within, um, you know, within the course, you know, how that we can really apply it and really be able to use it musically. Um, so just throwing that lesson out there. Sorry that I look like crap. Uh, it's, it's, it's show day, you know, and I haven't taken a shower yet. Um, but I wanted to squeeze this out before I have to start getting ready and getting out of here. Thank you guys.